In this video, I'm going to explain some of my frustration with people not putting sensors on their cars. How many sensors do you think an OEM has on their car when they're building it? The first development car they're actually testing on. Heaps of them, they measure everything so they can work out where they can save half a cent because they're making so many of them, it makes sense to do that. When you modify a car, you'll basically take on the role of an OEM. You're building a car that has never been built before, right? So you're making assumptions that the OEM has done things in the way that's still gonna work with your car. If you don't put sensors on there, you don't actually know that that's true. I'm going to use an example from another video where we had a car which had a misfire problem which happened on the racetrack. It only happened at race meetings, it never happened at practices or at track days or anything like that and that was because it only turned up when the car had been running for 10-15 minutes. The problem turned out to be that there was no pre-filter before the fuel pump so it was sucking foam from the fuel cell. Now there was no fuel pressure sensor on this car so we couldn't actually tell that that was the problem in the event. All we could see was um, that the wideband sensor was showing that it was reading lean, but as you know, when you get a misfire, it reads lean anyway, so that didn't actually tell us that it was a fuel system problem. So if we'd had that sensor on the car, we could have saved a whole lot of time with diagnosing the problem. Now, another sensor which I think everyone should run on their car is a wideband oxygen sensor. For the main reason that you can run any sort of lean out protection that you want, that covers a wide range of problems that could happen with the car, such as fuel pressure problems, bad mapping, uh, bad map sensors, or yeah, map sensor hoses falling off and things like that. So if you don't run that sensor on your car, I think you're really missing a trick. Now I'd also suggest that you put a sensor on anything that you've modified or that might become a problem. So for example, if you've put bigger fuel injectors on and you're still running the original fuel delivery system, then fuel pressure might become a problem. So you definitely want to run a fuel pressure sensor if you can. Now a lot of people run upgraded fuel systems and run aftermarket fuel pressure regulators and things like that. They've all got a 18th NPT thread in them to put a gauge in, you just screw a sensor in, be done with it, wire it into the EC, you've got the data there, you know immediately if there's any problem. Oil pressure is another one that I think you should definitely have, especially on a circuit car, because oil starvation is a real problem on those because of the high cornering Gs. So I think you should definitely run an oil pressure sensor, wire it into the ECU, run engine protection with it so it can save your engine from problems. You can also, of course, see the oil pressure and the fuel pressure directly on your dash, so that way you can see immediately if there are any problems, even when you're driving down the track. Now sensors are also really useful for my friends doing tech support because if they've got a question where a customer's saying that their engine's running lean or something like that, if they've got the data there from the fuel pressure sensor, then they can try and help tell the customer where to look for it. If they don't have the sensor on the car, you don't get the data, so therefore they are really just guessing what's happening. Sensors are actually very commonly available and relatively inexpensive these days as well, especially compared to the cost of a big build. So I'd definitely be running wideband fuel pressure and oil pressure on anything. And for a serious build, I'd be running exhaust back pressure and post compressor pressure and various um, inlet air temperatures throughout the inlet tract and all that sort of thing as well. All right, just one word of warning. I was once at a workshop helping set up an ECU on a car and he had extra sensors on it. And I was looking at the fuel pressure sensor and it suddenly was working and then it dropped out and didn't read at all. And I could see on the ECU diagnostics it was showing zero volts. So I thought maybe the sensor's unplugged or something like that. I asked the tuner, can you check it? He pulled the plug out and there's fuel in the back of the sensor. So the sensor had developed an internal leak where the fuel had got from the wet end to the dry end. I asked him where'd you get the sensor from and he said, well, the customer supplied himself, he bought it off eBay. So I'd say, if you're gonna add sensors, just remember to get reputable ones, not no name ones. If they're connected to a pressurized fuel system or a pressurized oil system, they develop a leak, then you could have a lot of trouble. It's always the $4 part that costs you the $100,000 bill. So moral of the story, put on sensors, but don't be a tight ass, get proper ones.